Hello and welcome to Table Ready Gaming. I'm Dave Snodgrass. Today we're down at the paint bench and I'm going to show you a simple way to paint zombie skin. So I decided to show off this technique by using Reaper's Bones Mini. I apologize, but I don't recall what mini he is because I got him initially with the Reaper's Bones Kickstarter. So he's been at the bottom of my bits box for a while now. So we start off by gluing this mini to just a plain plastic base. My gaming OCD requires that every miniature be on the same style base for a game. And while there is a sculpted base already on this mini, I think these Bones miniatures are a little too top heavy and they fall over easily. Plus this lets me add magnets to the bottom of the miniature for better storage. If you're curious on how I store my miniatures, you can watch that video here. So I decided that I needed to texture the rest of the base. I decided to do this by mixing in some milliput. Traditionally, I would use green stuff for this part, but I'm kind of excited to try new epoxies and see what works best. Like green stuff, milliput comes in two parts. I've not experimented with milliput as much as I have with green stuff, so I'm still a little green on the ratios. I <laughs> get it, green, because it's not green stuff. Never mind. So for this application, I just did a 50-50 mix. I didn't favor either part. You're going to want to mix this consistently so that you have a nice solid color throughout. Like so. I then started to apply this to the miniature's base. I just kind of pulled off chunks and dabbed it around the pre-sculpted base. Once I got the circle base covered, I mushed it all together. See, even out the milliput, I use a fondant roller to get a nice smooth even spread. I then use this textured brick roller from Green Stuff Worlds. This is hardly perfect, but I kind of like the broken stonework look I'm getting here because this dude kind of is beefy and the broken stone gives him definitely a Hulk smash kind of look. I then took my X-Acto blade and cleaned up around the edge of the base. I had some milliput left over, so I decided to make another base with this stone texture. I'll set it aside for a future project, waste not what not on Dave's hobby bench. So, after some assembly, you can see this is how our mini is looking. Now lately, in the mini painting world, a lot of folks have been chatting about Xenophil highlighting. Or a way to lay down some shadows and highlights quickly. By painting the miniature a dark color and then spraying over the top, just the very top, with a lighter color. Typically, the colors used are black and white. But for this guy, I thought it would be fun to play with some different colors. I decided to use a dark purple and then an off-white dead skin color. Specifically, I used violet and rotten white from the game color paint range. I decided to use purple because I thought it would look like bruised flesh, specifically after we apply the next part. Unfortunately, I've not found an acceptable way to record my airbrush with my current camera setup, so I'm going to just cut to what the mini looks like at this point. But honestly, this miniature is like 50% done by now. So now onto our secret weapon for fast, easy zombie skin. And that's Baby Poop Wash from Secret Weapon Miniatures. These washes are some of my favorite, and they mix with Games Workshop's mediums perfectly. So if you ever want to weaken the color, that's a good way to do so. But for this mini, I'm using it straight out of the dropper. If you need to paint a bunch of zombies fast for games like Zombicide or Fantasy Undead Army, Baby Poop has you covered. It gets you great, sickly looking skin. This wash is absolutely a gift from Grandpapa Nurgle himself. Then I used some Carrion Red from Games Workshop. Added this to some of the recesses to give the golem an inflamed look on some of his skin. By this point, he looks like he's had better days. After that, I decided to use the Stonewall Gray from Game Killers Range to lay down a base coat for the stain work on the mini's base. I then used Cold Gray to add some highlights to the base, but all in all, I wanted something a little more contrasting. So I came back with a 50-50 mix of cold gray and rotten white to do an edge highlight around the base. I 
I then jumped back to the mini and did a heavy dry brush of Rotten White. This highlight is extreme for sure, but I think it also makes him look like he had some dust on himself from tearing down the walls and ripping up the floors. So it works on this guy in my opinion, but we'll still want to tone that down a little bit. We do that first by adding a wash of Strong Tone from Army Banner over the entire miniature. I even decided to add Strong Tone to the bricks on the base as well. Once the Strong Tone was dried, I decided I wanted to add a little bit more contrast to stonework, so I decided to hit the base with the nice wash of Nuln Oil. Good old reliable Nuln Oil. Now it's time to paint the zombie's shredded diaper. And I started on that with some dry rust brown from Game Killers. I decided to go back and highlight this guy's fur diaper thing by adding some more of the rotten white. It was already out on my wet palette, so I figured what the hell, and was just mixing what was available. For his belt, I got out Old Faithful, Parasite Brown, and my zombie is now the heavyweight champion of the world. After that, I thought I would suggest some detail on his face of this mini, by painting on some eyes and his teeth. Since this is one of Bone's first monsters, his face kinda looks like mashed potatoes, so I'm not going crazy here. But this little detail really helps the mini's expression pop. And that expression says brains. While that was drying, I had this crazy idea of trying to do a black to gray fade along the side of the base. But in the end, I just ended up painting the entire rim black. So detailing the side of bases is going to be a project for another day. I then took some metallic paint from Scale 75 and painted the zombie's belt buckle. I'm putting a lot more detail in this miniature than I would if I was painting a horde of zombies. I then decided it was time to wrap this guy up, so I painted his clothes this khaki color. Then shadowed the cloth with Reichlin Flesh Tone from Games Workshop. I also thought the zombie's teeth was a little too pearly white, so I hit them with Reichlin Flesh Tone as well. I just can't imagine being a brute in the Legion of the Undead gives you access to that strong of a dental plan. Now when you're cranking out zombies, Blood for the Blood God is an amazing shortcut. Because anything you don't want to paint, you just cover in blood. For this guy, though, I decided to keep the gore effects to a minimum, and only focus on his hands and mouth. Make sure you apply the paint last after you matte seal your mini, otherwise you'll lose the glossy effect and of the paint, and it won't look as convincing. Lastly, for some real fun with gore, you can become inspired by Dragon Age and lay down your miniature on its back. Then with a large, stiff brush, start flicking blood for the blood god on the mini. It makes a very convincing blood splatter. And that's how our flesh Nolan looks, now that he's all painted up. I had a lot of fun with this miniature. It's fun painting a flesh color scheme that's done almost exclusively with washes. If you enjoy these videos and want to start supporting my channel, the best way to do that is by sharing this video with a fellow gaming friend. Getting the word out will really help my channel grow. As I said before, this is similar to a method I use to crank out 40 Mantic Zombies for RPG games. The trick is not to spend so much time on the fine detail though. When a horde of the undead is rushing your players, no one is going to notice 20, the 23rd 
of the 40th Zombies doesn't have his left earring painted. Plus, if you feel like details needs covering, then just simply smother it in blood for the Blood God. Here's five of my 40 zombies I've painted before. You can tell each one's detail isn't so great, but when they're rushing in mass, these guys look quite convincing on the tabletop. Anyhow, I'm Dave Snodgrass on Table Ready Gaming. If you'd like more tips on how to get ready for game night, even faster, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, there's a website with some pretty cool game night accessories uh, down in the description below, so feel free to check that out. Also, YouTube thinks you might enjoy some of these other videos from my channel, uh, so I'd like to see you check those out as well. Anyhow, I'm Dave Snodgrass. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.